CBS Narinda Kawa vs. Carl Benjamin, otherwise known as Sargon of Akkar. Now, if you've seen this particular Lotus episode before and you know who that is, then don't worry, I'm not going to expose you to any of it because I don't hate you guys. Well, that and also listening to her voice during the editing of this video would qualify self-inflicted punishment. <laughs> I think I'll pass. Now, the subject is disgusted to be British, Carl debates Narinda Kawa. Not exactly a fitting title for reasons I'll go into in a few moments. Uh, feel free to look up the video on your own time. A heads up though, you will be annoyed. Uh, if she looks familiar, it's because I've done a video on her myself several months ago called England Deserves Better. You can kind of tell where this is going, can't you? Now before we even bother with the why, let me give you all a backstory about this one. If I punch her name into a search engine, here are my top three results. Big Life Inside Big Brother Star, that's already a giant red flag, Narinda Kaur's glamorous life with pink supercar and hunky husband after ditching best pal Brian Dowling, The Sun, March of 2022. I wanted to be famous, you still do. Narinda Kaur on Big Brother and why she's proud she called out Tyneside Racism, Chronicle Live, September of 2019. I get the impression if a place didn't have racism until you showed up, the problem is probably you. And so is the solution, considering it didn't exist prior to your arrival. Big Brother star rips into Queen Elizabeth on anniversary of death, the Metro, September of 2023. Let's be honest here for a moment, shall we, folks? I would wager that with that picture and those three headlines, almost all of you, without even watching this woman talk, can pinpoint her entire personality damn near faultlessly. How? Come on. This woman of color was an actress who thought going on Big Brother of all things as a contestant would grow her name. I want to be famous and is now whinging about colonialism. Give me a freaking break. This is the embodiment of a lazy caricature, no more, no less. You may as well come packaged with a button that says press here like a plastic NPC. Which for all intents and purposes, she may as well be. She runs on the basic feedback loop, only in reverse. Desired input, fame. Required output, belligerent stupidity. Proceeds to go into any space with eyeballs and behaves like said belligerent idiot. I said this before in a previous video. I don't like having my pattern recognition hijacked. I don't like looking at anything that doesn't look like me and instantly default to incompetent stupidity or malice because I have nothing else acting as a counterbalance. So when I see these kinds of examples, all it does is reinforce and harden the prejudice that I already happen to have. And when she spoke to Sargon, oh sweet lord, was it the embodiment of the stereotypes. On the one hand, the calm and measured Englishman. On the other side, a typical woman of color in Europe, ignorant, blithering loudmouth. And I don't mean that to be derogatory, no, 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 I mean that quite literally. If you watch the interview, you'll go, holy damn, Spoon wasn't kidding. Again, you're never an individual. Your duty, especially if you're a foreigner, is to behave in a manner that befits an ambassador for your group, because you're a guest in somebody else's nation. If you don't, you're essentially a poison. Your poor behavior is tainting the social fabric. And when you have someone like that, who is gleefully willing not only to denigrate the social fabric, but to do so for nothing other than personal gain, that is a despicably evil person. Especially if such acts are encouraged by the current state of corruption, it tells me they aspire to no higher ideals other than material gain and will sell out and take the easy route. They are weak in spirit, easily tempted, and thus loyal to only what brings them riches. They will gleefully get on their knees and beg for coin if only they get the chance to dance in the ashes of the civilization they aid in destroying. The whole colonial whining as well is the most pathetic bottom of the barrel kind of grievance. Like here for me is how you maintain credibility. You don't get to have a bloodline that was once under colonial rule. Now you live in that colonial rule and bitch about it. You look like an ungrateful idiot, not to mention hypocritical. There's a good line by an Irish comedian, Tommy Tiernan. England has a fantastic reputation for taking over the world and then getting upset when those people follow them home. <laughs> it's a good joke, but it is also a good point. Why did you follow them home? If you were an anthropologist or Andy the Alien who came down and observed the world during the height of the British Empire, you would have to go, whoa, how did this tiny country come to rule so much of the world? You have to acknowledge there is something uniquely superior about the British that allowed them to conquer so much. And the people loved the British Empire. They loved it so much that when they left, the place tanked. The English warped their minds. They all developed Stockholm Syndrome, and now they all lust and crave the rule of the European man, which is why they followed them home. So spare me your BS cries of, oh, my colonialism. Why are you there then? Oh, the British Empire should give back this and that. You're a washed-up reality TV contestant. Your net worth is $5 million. Shut up.
The arguments against colonialism is such a reductionist cringe as well. Oh, the British came and colonized. Yeah, because prior to the Europeans arriving in the ages, no one ever fought for land or riches ever. No, 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 you were the pristine Western democracy somehow before the West was even, all holding hands and singing Kumbaya. And the English just sailed up and went, huh, flag. Perhaps if you get that reference, by the way. Or my favorite one, they stole the resources. By what metric is it yours exactly? Because conquest and conquer is not a method you deem justified apparently, so what's left? Blood and soil ties, is it? That seems a tad bit critical considering you have no blood and soil ties to the land you currently live in. They always pull some arbitrary numbers out of thin air when it comes to the wealth that was extracted. Let me explain this to you, you ditzy bint for the fat load of good it will do, but anyway. Wealth is a very nebulous concept in this regard. When you say a country is wealthy, what is your metric for wealthy, especially in historical terms? Resources alone mean nothing. They are only valuable in one of three ways. They are used in making something valuable, they are used in making something that can generate value, or sold and traded for something that has value. That's it. Resources have to be valued by more than one party for it to be valuable. Like you can be the last person on earth and stumble upon a vault of gold. If you have no food, you will still starve and die. The gold means nothing. Take a look at my home country of South Africa, for example. Prior to, I think the 70s and 80s, two-thirds of the world's gold alone came from South Africa. I think almost 50% of the entire gold ever mined on Earth came from only one region in South Africa, Vedvatasarand. Gold has been used for centuries, so why was South Africa not immensely wealthy given its ungodly quantity of gold? Well, let's see, the natives had no idea it was even there, being their primitive as all hell. It was only discovered in the 19th century, the natives had no methods for industrial-scale extraction, nor would they have had any value for it either way. They never made any seaworthy vessels, and given that South Africa is the very southern tip of Africa, trading then is quite cumbersome. And who would they trade with exactly? There's a few reasons for you. By the way, I realize this is like Mensa-level IQ shit compared to this woman's thinking, which I would bet handsomely is not even three digits, seeing as she didn't even know what per capita means, a surprise to no one. Which brings me to my one criticism of Sargon. His conduct was fine, by the way. He's a father. I imagine that explains why he has the patience for dealing with what amounts to essentially someone no brighter than a toddler. Carl, it is beneath you and your business to even look at the direction of this woman, let alone trying to talk to her, for a very simple reason. She is the lowest, low-effort sort of grifter. Even her identity is only flexed insofar as it is useful for getting money. She is a shameless controversy farmer. She is not interested in learning anything because it is not useful for the overall goal of getting money. And that's it. That's all there is to her. Nothing more. She's like a balloon. It doesn't need air. It needs to be let go and ignored. Just <laughs> fading into obscurity. Cheers for watching. And once again, I apologize for nothing.